You're listening to Podcast PXN, a video game podcast delivering player experience news. Let's go! We're playing a hot new game called Hot or Flop today. And welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 261. I am one of your hosts, the video essayist and video producer from Portland, Oregon, Christian Macias, and I'm joined over Discord by Kentucky's number one Spartan and PXN founder, Daniel Prindle, a.k.a. Dan is DTM. Happy 17th birthday to the best game of all time, Halo 3. <laughs> A long pause, holy. <laughs> mm -mm. The president of the Tifa Lockhart fan club is not here today. Uh, he will be mourned and missed. Instead, in his place is the third person Sigma Gage Dempster. Hello. Happy to be here. Yeah. How happy? Yeah. Show me. Thank you to everyone watching us live and participating in the chat. Just as a reminder, we're live each and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. Just search Podcast PXN. You can also find us on twitch.tv slash podcast PXN at the same fucking time. Isn't that something? The topic of the show this week is the state of play for September 2024. It happened. We're going to be recapping it, reviewing it, giving our, uh, our thoughts and impressions for every single thing announced. Right now, we're going to go right into our topic of the show. Uh, guys, this premiered yesterday. I think all of us watched it live, which is none of us said we were going to do that. I had it on while I was working, and then everyone just started messaging just randomly. And I was like, oh, we're all, we're all watching it. It happened. Um, general thoughts. Uh, actually, real quick, I'll say that uh, they announced it the day before, and they said 30 minutes, 20 games, some PSVR 2 stuff. Have at it. Here you go. And then it was like 45 minutes long, so it went a little bit over uh, with a couple of uh, some things toward the end that I think uh, made this kind of punch up more than the regular state of play usually does. Uh, some general thoughts. What do you guys think of the state of play as, as a whole? Is this one of their, their best yet, or is it a flop, as some people online have been saying? Yeah, re reading the live chat, um, lots of L's. Anytime a woman showed up on screen, lots of wokes capital wokes in the is in that the true yeah it was bad it was bad i was halfway through the show i just started watching the chat just to see the brain rot so is no one gonna play gta 6 then uh, yeah <laughs> well that's the exactly um i don't know i wasn't i wasn't super impressed with the state of play i thought i thought we'll get to it but what happened at the end was a pleasant surprise but aside from that unless i'm misremembering i feel like a lot of these games have not only been announced but we've seen like similar showings for a lot of these games before. I, I could be wrong. Um, so I don't know. I wasn't. What's that? It was the inverse. The inverse. Okay. Well, I guess I'm wrong. Yeah, think... more like fifty-fifty. I think there wasn't. Uh, it lacked like consistent like. Here's a here's a really big thing at the start. Here's a really big thing at the middle. Here's a really big thing at the end. We got the thing at the end. I feel like the other pieces, while there was a lot of good stuff in there, I just feel like it wasn't a amazing show. I think it was a good show. I don't think that it was anything to complain about if you're a PlayStation fan. Um, I do think it's hilarious, though, because I was on my walk with Buck, and I was watching on my phone as I'm walking, and trying to watch while communicating with you guys on Twitter with just one device was was difficult. But uh, I saw at one point, I think was it Jeff or IGN, one of the other uh, tweeted out that the first announcement was coming fall of 2025, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Because I had watched that and then switched to the Twitter chat to talk to you guys, and I was like, "Did I miss that? That it's coming fall 2025? That there's no way, like." Which I don't want to spoil what it is before we get into it, but I was like, "There's no way," and then it was a it was a typo. They didn't actually mean fall 2025, fall 2020. I don't know. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, zero Astrobot, the DLC. Uh, okay, I mean that's the first thing. We'll, we'll we'll jump right into that. Um, 
I disagree. I, th- I think this is this is one of their strongest yet. Uh, I think State of Plays in the past, for a long time, have been not very good, and they've been, you know, they're kind of throwaways where you'll get, like, two cool things, and the rest is like, yeah, I, I could I'd, I could have skipped this, no doubt. This is 40 minutes. I think this is, like, the first time, like, the, legit the first time they kind of nailed the pace of it, um, like, where it didn't feel long. Um, I kind of enjoyed, like, the talking heads. They didn't overstay their welcome. It was just enough to break up the pace. And in terms of quality of, like, the stuff shown, not. I mean, even if none of it was for, or not everything was for me, nothing stayed. I think the Dragon Age thing is the only thing that, like, where I felt the length of it. Because we've seen so much Dragon Age before. And that game comes out in, like, a month. And there's, like, three hours of, like, footage, like, directly from Bioware you can go watch. And, like, that one was, like, the least impressive. Everything else is, like, yeah, cool, whatever. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Dan. I was just gonna say something about Dragon Age, but I'll wait till we get to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but like the surprises, I thought were all all quality, and all the updates to games, I thought were all quality because they were mostly que- uh, answers to questions that we had, and, and I mean like release dates and or what is like going to come with X, Y, or Z. Um. So I thought it was solid. I thought this is like what's what smaller directs should be. Um, we can just dive right in. Uh, it starts with an a- the Astrobot thing, the intro, all of them running as it does when you boot up the game or whatever, and then the the Hell Divers bots come right in, uh, and it's our first look at some of the content that's coming to Astrobot later in this fall. Uh, five new speedrun levels. 10 new bots to rescue. It's a free add-on coming. Um, I don't know when. I, I, I thought this was going to be one of the shadow drops. Like, it's free now or free in the next, like, two to three weeks. No date. That, that's, like, the, the weirdest thing. Um, yeah, but it looks cool. We got to look at Eve from Stellar Blade and then a Helldiver bot. Hell, yeah. More Astro bot. I'm in. I'm in. This is the one I was confused by. Some, someone missed tweeted and said fall 2025 and i was like there's no way that's fall 2025 and i then, see it was a t- uh, okay okay yeah yeah the uh, do song do say the the game director of astrobot also mentioned wario 64 doesn't write it down in, in his mega thread but he did also mention that there's uh more uh stuff to share like more additions apart from these two things coming in, in the dlc i wonder what that is um, challenge levels, I suppose, maybe. We'll see. Sick. And it's free. That's good. Yes. And next up was the Midnight Walk for both PSVR, PS5 and PSVR 2 from the creators of Lost and Random. If you remember that game with the dice. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god. What is this? What, what are you, you doing? See that, Dan? You see what that, happened? Dan? No, I. What happened? Just focus, I suppose. What? Uh, focus entertainment. Uh, what do you What do you call this? Now, now I'm blanking. I, I lost my train of thought. What do you call this sort of uh, art direction? Claim like claymation, I suppose. Stop motion. To stop motion game. If you look at the blog post from from the developers, you can see pictures of them with the creatures that they made for this. There's like over two dozen creatures with posing with like the studio very impressive what they're doing um this is interesting interesting title uh but it is something for psvr too i suppose you know at least they're not abandoning it yet <laughs> adding some yeah original stuff yeah i agree i agree uh this is my game of the show this is a uh, hell is us from rogue factor slash nacon it's a third person action rpg looking game uh up on the blog post was from the studio talking about how they are removing all the artificial layers that come with games um that we've gone that we've grown used to things like maps and quest markers and quest logs all these things are removed they want you to be totally immersed into the design of the game like if something looks interesting it's probably where you should be going, they want you to use your intuition, and they want you to pay attention to what like people are telling you. Um, 
I'm very excited about this one. Also, like the design of the creatures looks uh, kind of insane. Uh, looks very cool. And I'm assuming the the UI is going to be non-existent as well. Uh, kind of like what it, they were showing in the gameplay, which is kind of a nice breath of fresh yeah. Air. If it's non-existent, like on the screen, like one would one would assume it's diegetic, like how dead space has right. isaac's health on his spine right which i love that kind of stuff that's cool. isn't it cool isn't that yeah. neat it's just yeah. an extra it's just an extra layer of effort of of trying to sort of blend these okay the player needs information uh how do we get this on screen without sort of a big pop-up and uh I, I, this was also my this is also my showing of the or my, my favorite thing of the, sh of the show as well you know how fucking sick it is to be like in real time in Dead Space and you open up your menu and it's just Isaac looking at his little thing, yeah. his wrist, going yeah. through that way. Very cool. That stuff is so cool to me. Uh, a second uh, VR game has hit the PS Tower with Metro Awakening coming November 7th to PSVR 2. Um, Metro Awakening is on other platforms, if I think. Yeah. Uh, it's now also coming to PlayStation um i haven't played a single metro metroid metro game ever uh but the vr ones look cool as well i'll say that much for sure it's got cool honestly it lends itself very well to vr too because the atmosphere in those games are fucking amazing so if they capture the same essence as the uh as the normal games then yeah that would be really cool you ever if you ever hit a wall, I think I think there's a good chance Christian might like the I can't speak to Exodus because I didn't play it, but the first Metro 2033 and Last Light. Yeah, very cool. Like like uh, yeah. Dan said, atmospheric, but it's also like cosmic horror. Like it's actually I think it might be up your alley. It's Last very, Light. very good games. Last Light is the, my favorite of the, the franchise that that game's great. I love that. Game. I'm due for a replay because I, I they kind of blend together in my mind, but I just remember like feeling the atmosphere in those games. Yeah. You guys excited for Stalker 2? I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, up next was Arc Age Chronicles coming 2025. I, I don't know what this was. It looks like a, an action, uh, third person action RPG of some sort. Uh, maybe like, maybe using UE5. I don't know. I, it looked like UE5. I wasn't 100%. Um, Looks cool. Very looks very stylish. Also looks a little bit generic. I will say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. From a, a smaller publisher, I don't even know. I don't know of any of their other games. Cacao, Cacao games. Cacao games. Yeah. yeah. I don't recognize them. I don't know either. Up next is Power World. It's coming to PS Five, and that's already out as of yesterday. Although. The asterisk there is that it's it is, it is delayed in Japan indefinitely, obviously because of their ongoing legal issues with, um, is it Niantic? No, not Niantic. Um, excuse me. Pokemon? The Pokemon Company and yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, this is massive. Uh, Lunar. Lunar Remastered. Uh, the first game and the second game are coming to... Uh, PlayStation. I'm not a Lunar guy, uh, but I do know it's a very beloved RPG. So, I'm sure there are plenty of sickos who are very excited about this. Yes. Uh, but I do think I do think it's 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 fucking sick when uh, old games like this get remasters and they and they look the same. They're just kind of upscaled. Do you know what I mean? And they, mm. they fucking they, they made the four three into widescreen, but it, it, the graphics are the same. I do That's appreciate like, that as well. I got mm -hmm. as I was walking Buck and watching the event and talking to you guys on Twitter, Pat, I got a text from one of my friends that lives around here, and he said, "Dude, I played this game as a kid, and they were remastering it with three exclamation points, and it was this game." So I've never even yeah. heard of this game, but he was excited about it. Genre blending. They also have like animated cutscenes. Uh, up next was TMNT. The Radical Reptiles DLC was uh, officially announced, and that's out today. That's on all platforms, uh, so we can go hop back in if we wanted to. 
Um, uh, it includes new music and remixes from various artists, uh, as well as new playable characters like Mona Lisa. Not that Mona Lisa, but a different Mona Lisa. And some other reptile looking dude. This game's dangerous for us to play together. I don't know why. We're just having fun. Somebody had to freak out. Yeah, but <laughs> somebody had a I'm not gonna know. And then somebody else just quit. It's just like, like a dangerous game. game. Somebody no. Somebody somebody backed out and then recreated the lobby and then I lost them and then I wanna share him and then yeah, where the rabbit hole goes. This is kind of an insane update. Uh, Sonic and Shadows, the upcoming game, is getting a movie pack tie-in with Sonic the Hedgehog 3, uh, wherein Shadow is the, the skin from the movie and also voiced by Keanu Reeves. Very cool. Crazy. Yeah. For a second, I thought we were getting a Shadow game with Keanu, like a full just based on the movie no. right oh fuck but, like a spin-off yeah I, th I thought i was like oh fuck because it's a movie tie-in but this is probably fun are you telling me i'm like not out of sync you are now you are now you weren't before but now i'd have noticed you are now it'll get it, it gets gradually worse and then it fixes itself yeah that's weird are you using the same thing that I have? That's weird. Yep. Hmm. Update to Dragon Age of the Veil Guard. Uh, the first dragon fight we've seen ever. Um, kind of a weird way to show off this dragon fight. Uh, Gage made a comment like, they are fast forwarding through it. But like, the way they were showing it off didn't seem very exciting. They were pretty distant away from it, from it and kind of like just spell casting stuff from a distance didn't seem very climactic when it's, it was shown off i was trying to give it the benefit of the doubt and i was like okay this probably feels fun and intense to play and it's probably a big sort of like climactic endpoint. but they did kind of introduce it as like let's take a look at this climactic battle and it like i said i i just made a quip that yeah it's funny that they're just fast forwarding through it but also it did seem very kind of mundane um Hopefully it feels better when you're playing it, and maybe the stakes are a bit higher, but... I wonder, do you guys feel this way where sometimes you get shown a game almost too much, and you're like, I, yeah. I was excited for this, and now I'm kind of like... Even though nothing's changed and the quality of the game still looks the same, but because I'm just being shown it so much, it's almost like it's... I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm losing interest almost in this game. I feel like for... Th I, th I feel like this format of show was the wrong place to have this type of deep dive because like you're saying they're fast forwarding through this entire climactic battle you're missing key points and i i don't think that this two minute little glimpse of this larger scale battle is very uh indicative of of the game so i right i think mm -hmm. it was probably a mistake for ea to to insert it into this show but i agree and it was also the longest it was five like five minutes almost um so yeah I agree. Alan Wake 2, out of nowhere, announcing their DLC, The Lake House, that's dropping sometime in October. Uh, and you do play as Agent Estevez from the uh, Federal Bureau of Control. Uh, very excited. Exclusive to the Deluxe Edition, both digital and physical formats. Yeah, this is sick. I'm a, I told you guys I'm going to play both DLCs when this comes out. I'm very excited. Low key. Listen, I'm a I'm a I'm on board with hating the the treatment of PSVR 2. Cuz I'm right there with you with everyone. You know what I mean? However, Hitman in VR, I think, is 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 fantastic. Having the a couple, you know, like two, like a ninety second to two minute trailer of of Hitman in VR for PSVR two showing off, I thought was awesome. Uh, dual wielding guns, uh, intuitive gestures. That sh I thought the shot of 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 you as Agent Forty Seven with the sniper 
looking over the um the like the race the f1 race was fucking sick and that is coming in december i still i still won't get one of these uh but if i had one i i, I would i would fucking i would play this and i would say probably it will come to other platforms as well would be almost bet. certainly sure i don't see it coming to quest 2 that probably like a quest 3 thing right or Steam, I guess. Steam VR. Right, exactly. Uh, this was announced in the morning, but then was also shown off at the State of Play. Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver 1 through 2 Remastered was officially announced, and that's out December 10th from Aspire. Uh, another case where somebody somebody on Twitter called the graphics of this Nostalgia Upres, which I thought was such an interesting way to call that, because, yeah, the textures are touched up, it is not. It does not look like the original, but they, it it's really fucking close to. They're just touched up, uh, tup, touched up enough uh, to make it to make it smooth, to make it just a bit nicer, a bit cleaner. Uh, but it, you know, still kind of not removed from what the original art style kind of looked like. So, nostalgia up res is kind of a cool, cool name. All right, fuck you guys. Fear the Spotlight got a, a release date that's coming out October 22nd. I am very excited. One of my most anticipated, I think, was also showing off that it's coming to um, one of the tiers of PlayStation Plus. I don't know which one. I don't even know how much those that costs because I don't have it. And I won't. This is the, if you have it. There you go. This is the uh, Blumhouse Games game. One of them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Made by, made by a husband and wife. Both of them. It's a good game. Good Very game. Cool. What is this? Uh, Towers of Agishba. I actually, I don't remember this. Now in early access. I don't remember this at all. This looks fake. Is it not? This is real? It's I real. I think it's real, yeah. No shade. But not for me. Uh, split screen is coming to Lego Fortnite, along with a dual sense controller you can you can buy. Pre-orders for that open up October third, this next Thursday. Um, be excited. Glenn, don't buy, don't buy it. Glenn, don't buy it. No, why would Glenn buy that? Glenn, like, is Glenn obsessed. Fortnite? Yeah, he's obsessed with buying things for Fortnite. You know what, Glenn? Why? Glenn fucking Glenn saying in the chat, Daniel play both DLCs. I'll believe it when I see it. You know what, Glenn? I've got fucking news <laughs> for you in the fucking what you got That's for awesome. me segment of the show, Glenn. Stick around. Dynasty Warriors Origin Origins. <laughs> Origins. Orange. Got a release date. <laughs> got, got, a rele- <laughs> got a release date. That's out January 17th. No, not for me, but I do know there's a lot of people who are into this series. Another extended look at Monster Hunter Wilds that's out February 28th, uh, and I'm very excited. Some of the fights they were showing off uh, looked really sick. The like scale of the fight, along with the way the environment changed when they were fighting it, like the in- like the entire weather system changed the terrain of the area, um, and then they went to like a the, the same location but now peaceful. I thought was sick. Uh, And I guess the premise of the game is is the group of hunters who are after not the white whale, but the white wraith? White something. White gold. Not in February. Is this game in the same vein as Monster Hunter World, I'm assuming? What does that mean? Like, I don't know, the same same style of game because aren't aren't yes. there different styles uh for monster hunter like the different iterations or am i crazy are you asking if this is going to be like similar like what's like a third person yeah you know what i mean i know what you're talking about dan i think i think almost all the games are similar but there was one recently that was a little bit different oh okay. and that's probably what's throwing you off i but i think most of them are the same where it's like gotcha grinding and fighting one sort of big enemy and using different strategies to try and take it down Gotcha. Yeah, apparently this they're streamlining a lot of the shit in this one, which is I think what has me the most excited. Where you don't you have to grind less, uh, and you don't have to like 
leave areas to like craft shit or whatever. They're doing a lot of like on the fly stuff, which I think is good. Nice. Lego Horizon also got a release date that's out November 14th. Sorry, Lego Horizon Adventures, I didn't say the full title. Um, and those that pre order the deluxe edition get access to costumes as well as a amusement park, <laughs> I think. Roller coaster what? customization. There you go. Yeah. Apparently, people dug this game at, at Summer Game Fest. Like, there was like surprise, surprisingly, like good. Hmm. It's a kids' game. Uh, and then who, p- people who were super excited about Horizon uh, lost their shit at the Horizon Zero Dawn remaster for PS5 and PC. It's it's being done by Nixus. That's out Halloween, same day as Dragon Age: The Veil Guard. Uh, sorry, what is like a Horizon Adventures out on? It's the same day as something else. I can't remember what it is. But they're oh no, that was Assassin's Creed Shadows, and that talk about that later. Uh, upgrade cost is uh, nine ninety nine for Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. I won't bitch about it. <laughs> Listen, man, there's no smart delivery in, in PlayStation. What, I what, what know, do you want? Them? I just what do you want them to do? I yeah. I and I think the my, the biggest issue I have with it is the fact that they took Horizon Zero Dawn out of the PlayStation uh, game catalog because it was in the game catalog. They pulled it knowing that this was coming. So they're essentially like right baiting you to yeah. buy it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, that does suck. That does, That is uh, that's a shame. What a weird thing to try to make a thing, you know? I I I uh, whatever. I'm pretty sure we all don't like Horizon on on this podcast. We don't need we don't need to go there. Uh, this was a fucking insane surprise for me. Stellar Stellar Blade is getting an update, and it's a crossover with Near Automata. It's getting a DLC coming this year, twenty twenty four, along with a photo mode. Oh yeah, there's the camera. Ro would like that if he was here. I don't think Ro play. Okay, is he not a near autonoma? I don't know. I assumed. I made a judgment. No, I'm talking about Stellar Blade. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Near's near's fucking awesome. Um, somebody asked Yoko Taro about this, and he said, "Yeah, we'll do anything for money." <laughs> so awesome. Uh, we got to look at some games coming to the PlayStation Plus. Uh, monthly game. Sorry, the place. The monthly games were announced, and then the classic catalog got uh some games. I- insane games added legacy of a cane uh blood omen and then dino crisis were added to the catalog that's actually pretty huge uh there's a lot of dino crisis that goes and then last of us part one is also coming to the premium and extra catalogs go go crazy um new dual sense and ps5 covers were sorry covers and colors were announced indigo pearl and teal pre-order start october 3rd for those uh I had a question for one of these for Dan. I think it was the pearl one, that white one, if you scroll down. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, is that two-tone? You know, is, is that like, does that, does that not count as tool, uh, dual tone? But then if you take a closer look at some of the videos or pictures, it looks like the top part is glossy, and then the bottom part that's normally black is like a matte color of white, which I think is like weird. Yeah, I, I I think I'm with Dan on that part. Like, just make the whole thing glossy. Why do half matte, half gloss? Yeah, I don't like that at all. I I love the look of my PS5 with the the black plates. It's all black. That's mm, I can't beautiful. Think. Updates for PS5 Pro: some enhanced games, um, FF7 Rebirth, Horizon Forbidden West, Grand Turismo 7, Stellar Blade. Dragon's Dogma 2, Jedi Survivor, Snake Eater Delta, Resident Evil Village and Resident Evil 4, uh, F124, Ratchet and Clank, Assassin's Creed Shadows, and Spider-Man 2, and more were featured in this, like, sizzle reel type thing. We're going to move on from that. Uh, because the last thing they showed off was a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima titled Ghost of Yote. It takes place over 300 years removed from the original game and stars a new protagonist. I gotta say, I'm a ghost hater. Was not for me. 
even though I played it for like 40 to 50 hours or something like that, um, they immediately pulled me back. I think having it set 300 years in the future in a different region with a new protagonist is such an interesting and kind of bold approach. And I'm like, you know what? 100% we'll check this out, especially when the world looks this stylized. I'm like, you know what? So I free, Sucker Punch is kind of magi magicians with their graphical power and like their art direction. I'm interested. I'm interested. I'll leave it there. I was really, I talked about this months ago, um, or I don't know if it was on the podcast or not, but it doesn't matter. I was, I was really worried they would just do Ghost of Tsushima 2 and it'd be another uninspired sequel. Very, very cool. We were talking about this in the, in the private chat as this was happening. Very cool that they're doing Ghost of XYZ. Um, it, it also kind of opens the door. Not only does this look cool and interesting, and I'm glad it's not Jin Sakai again, but it opens the door for them to explore other time periods and kind of just string together the franchise by a similar theme of either redemption or vengeance or something like that and explore different settings. So very cool. Ghost of Yutai. I don't know if I'll play it, because like you, I did, was not huge on uh, Ghost of Tsushima, but it's definitely interesting. When when do we get the modern day sequel where they they come out with guns? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, no, I I agree with you guys. I think it's cool that they're taking a fresh look at this new characters, new uh setting new everything so uh i think this is cool without completely abandoning everything they did with ghost of tsushima i think that's mm -hmm. uh, yeah that's a cool approach for sure Do you guys i was gonna say to, something here but i, I can't well go ahead want to hear what gee gee's impression of the state of play was apparently let's let's hear it and gee do you mind wait, hold on. You gotta do it in the Gee voice. Gee, mind you, is a, a massive PlayStation fan. Yes. I gotta do it in a Gee voice. Right. Will, Wait. Will, guys. State <laughs> of Play was as shitty as the current shit show at Ubisoft, in my opinion. Oh my god. That was a terrible take on Gee. But... It's that brain run, dude. He thinks Liverpool's bad, too, so. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say about Yotai. So, I'll end it there. Uh, that's coming sometime in 2025. No firm release date yet, but I'm sure there's, oh. there's going to be plenty. What's Go Rose's thoughts? What's Rose's thoughts? We know. Do we know? Oh, 100%. He's fucking ecstatic for this. Uh, all right, let's hear your row impression. He's a big Ghost of Tsushima fan. Guys. I think I might actually play a video game when this comes out. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, I okay. I remember now. I hope. <laughs> I think my biggest kind of complaint for me with uh, Jin Sakai's character is that I thought like the the like honor uh, meditation was maybe a bit too trite and. maybe handled in a bit of a reductive way where like it didn't seem very interesting or, or like fr like, a, like a fresh approach i hope that if if it is some kind of like i think uh gage said like a vengeance story they just go hard the other way where it's like somebody like going hard and like you know like a john wick style like right proper vengeance tale and i think that would be something that could be interesting I, I i don't know what's going on right there's some kind of mystical thing going on with that wolf who knows what it what it's going to be about but um Doing some kind of turn in that regard, I think, might make it make a stronger game for me. Well, as a franchise, they could explore all the different ways that somebody might. If, that, if that's the hook of the franchise, right? You could have somebody where it's like, okay, honor is their is their crutch and their sort of uh, binding thing for their whatever whatever actions they're taking, and somebody might be dishonorable, and somebody you know you can you have all these different motivations for characters. Explore that. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, thank you to Guy, who's going to segue. He mentioned Ubisoft. And yeah, there is a lot of trouble at Ubisoft. We're going into our news of the week. There's only one item. Woke up this morning, hopped on a meeting, and as soon as our meeting started, boom, Ubisoft tweets out that they are delaying 
the release of Assassin's Creed Shadows from this November back four months to February 14th, 2025, citing what is essentially it's going to come down to polish. Um, yeah, Star Wars Outlaws <laughs> also tweeted at the same day, or sorry, a couple hours later, um, announcing the release of their Steam PC version of Star Wars Outlaws. And they cited the like, you know, we're listening to you guys and, and, and we, we, we had like a bunch of like stuff that they like they fixed and are planning a lot more poly essentially admitting it without admitting it that the, the game was released in a state that was just re really not ready to go. Um, and it seems like that was the case for Assassin's Creed as well. Um, simultaneously, at the same time, uh, apparently Ubisoft had an all hands meeting today. And they are also launching an internal investigation of themselves, uh, I guess, to figure out what's going on with their internal processes and development. Who knows? Because their stock price keeps falling. How are we feeling? Here's what I will say. There hasn't, from what I can remember, there hasn't been a Ubisoft game delayed in a long time. So this could either mean one of two things. This could either mean... They finally, and? sorry, yeah, go ahead. Prince of Persia. Fair, fair. The remake, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Uh, that's an exception. But still to my point, this could mean a couple of different things. This could mean either A, they're learning their lesson with their recently released games that have been very buggy and uh, messy, and maybe this extra time will actually make the game more polished. Or it could just be a delay to get them to the state where they typically release their games, which is a little troubling if that does happen, because uh, that shows they're not learning anything. And um, hopefully that's not the case. But I kind of have a bad suspicion that it might be the case that they're they're delaying this because they're having internal issues right now in terms of getting the game finished, but they are only just looking to get it to the barely acceptable range to release it is what I'm concerned about. I hope that's not the case, and of course I'm not going to judge it until I see actually what it ends up being, but uh, it does concern me a little bit that... Um, they may just release it as they, they typically have been as of late. Right. I was not impressed when I saw it behind closed doors at SGF. Um, I don't think... I, it didn't look like it was ready to go by November. Uh, who knows? It, it, like, it looked like if, if it did release then, it would be the typical Ubisoft mess. But I also didn't... It didn't seem too far gone that a couple extra months wouldn't help get it to a place that is at a more baseline for what we expect out of like modern AAA games. So, I mean, I can't speak to the full product obviously, cause I don't have it and I haven't seen it, but based on what I've seen and what we've seen in like extended like playthroughs and stuff, it seems like maybe I'm hoping this is the case where they're learning from their mistakes and they're trying to turn shit around. That that's my hope. Cause you don't, you don't want to see a, a big publisher like Ubisoft just like completely shit the bed right yeah we need we honestly need ubisoft to make a capcom level comeback like capcom made you know five six seven eight years ago whenever that was uh we need them to make that level of a comeback hmm. because i feel like they've become so complacent like capcom had been back then that they are just okay putting out games that are not great um and it's it's so inf to your point, Dan. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I think the industry would the industry would benefit from a strong Ubisoft. They have so much IP yeah. um, in their catalog that doesn't have competitors. Like I, I've I've mentioned this before, and it's like if 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 they brought back a proper fleshed out Ghost Recon game for console, like there is no SOCOM anymore. There is no there are no tactical military shooters. Um, Splinter you know, Far Cry, they, Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell for stealth game, right? A, a modern day espionage spy thriller. There's where, where do you see that in the triple A space right now? There's none. They have so, they have so much unique IP, um, that they could totally, 
uh, they, they, they could flesh out. I, I think it's a problem with leadership, and I think it's. I mean, we saw this with with the most recent Ghost Recon games that have turned into these GTA clones, and then they had a total identity crisis with Breakpoint, which was not only a GTA clone but had gear score and RPG mechanics, and it's like. They're just off the rocker, and it, it, to me, it screams leadership. Um, so hopefully, this internal investigation—we're investigating ourselves—yields some fruitful results. I'm not holding my breath, but um, well, I think a strong—I think a strong Ubisoft is is good for the industry. And I agree. I agree with you totally, Dan. They need a Capcom level comeback, absolutely. Well, it, oh, sorry, I, I said it's the company. What did I just say? It's the board. It's the board that's it's investigating. The, it's, yeah, specifically, right? it's yeah. the board investigating. The, yeah, which is I think yields a completely different tone. Like those motherfuckers want to know results. Like they want to know where the stop gaps are. Right. Uh, Insider Gaming, the last paragraph here, speaking to what what Gage is saying. Uh, this comes off the back of a paragraph that was talking about like falling stock prices. But speaking with current and former Ubisoft employees, I am told that the move was inevitable and the writing was on the wall. As many Ubisoft studios have been struggling due to poor management, um, seems like yeah, right nail on the head. That seems like that's that's what's happening. The other thing I worry about as a fallout from this uh, is will Ubisoft end up getting to the point where someone worse buys them? And then we mm. get layoffs, and then we embracer, yeah. embracer, Tencent, yeah. yeah. So I, I hope, and that's why I think I, I 100% agree with you, Gage. That we and agree with myself. That's a stupid comment. But <laughs> Hell yeah, we need we need a Capcom level comeback from them because if if not, and they can their stock price continues to fall, and they continue to struggle to put out games, there's going to be a couple repercussions, and that's going to be layoffs and possible buyout of of the company uh so yeah a little little troubling i'm gonna i want i want to pitch a hypothetical i want to take a little bit of time here out from our tight hour and pitch a hypothetical to you dan <laughs> what of these of these two bad scenarios what would you prefer either the company in its entirety gets bought out by some large conglomerate or it gets stripped of its IP and does a fire sale and sells off its various IPs to various different studios and companies. If I had to choose one, I'd choose the second one one. probably because the first one's probably going to end in a failure eventually. Yeah. I would suspect even though the second, neither option's great because it means the developers are kind of fucked that work there. Right. I would hate the second one though. Like even if that's like the, the best option out of right. those two it's like it's gonna go to a studio that has no fucking time to make it like any of these games anyway yeah or like uh, some of these people buy up the ip and they just throw them in a shelf somewhere and it's like yeah and then we're just stuck where we are now pretty much yeah hell yeah <laughs> damn why don't you come sit on my lap <laughs> anyway that was our one and only news item of the week before we get into our quick bites cruise on over take a little break check in with our fantasy draft check-in because of course ubisoft sorry excuse me assassin's creed was delayed which means some changes <laughs> happen or need to happen and can't with, fucking wait to talk about this here we go with somebody's <laughs> fantasy draft let's take a look at some news <laughs> what dance is giggling dude let's see was there any changes yes there was gauge over the weekend dropped Light no, f- I'm sorry. No, no, that's August. Yeah, there's been no- nothing this month. Nothing. My mistake. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we got some reviews. Uh, well, just one review, I believe. Legend of Zelda: Echoes of Wisdom. That is my game, I guess. I suppose. Yeah, that is me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, current open critic is I was 85 earlier. What is it at now? Let's find out. Still uh, 85. 85. Still, still 85, so it should be 15 points if that stays the same for the big ISO. Whereas Gage now has another game that has fallen. <laughs> I can't not laugh. Has fallen out of 2024, and he needs to sort his shit out. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? 
Dude, look at your look at your sheet. Like all the all, all the counter picks, the calendar, the big X's. What can you have any you have any drops? No. He, Not for games that aren't no gonna money. release this year. Yeah. And you don't have you got money? No money. Yeah. No. He doesn't have no money. Uh, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you guys gonna eat the hot wings there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know something funny about Assassin's Creed Shadows, though? One night I was playing with Gage, and I'm like, dude, you got to fill out your, your shit. You're going to be fucked. There's This fucking left. guy. And I said, look at Assassin's Creed's scores. They are not always great, but they get, they'll get you positive points. Like, you, they'll get you on the board. Like, pick up Shadows. It's there. And he picked it up, and this happens. So, I, I'm sorry. Gage. We'll get you on the board. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. Yet. That's so crazy, dude. I'm Gage, not doing spicy food. Have, too. You, have you chosen uh, what wings you're going for yet, Gage? No, we're going to choose for him, dude. <laughs> I'm going to eat them with you. Dude. I'm going to eat hot wings with you because I want them too. Mm. Hey, you could have had the pancakes. <laughs> That's true. That's not fun. That's not entertaining. I'll do I'll do the stupid hot wings and I'll fucking destroy my throat and I'll hate everything, but at least it'll be good for something and somebody will laugh. I will say though, you were like on the verge of making a pretty decent comeback. You're at 44 points with three games. You had Frostpunk 2, Dragon's Dogma 2, and Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. So aren't bad points for three games. Damn, dude. Can't believe we had a fucking... We got our our <laughs> fucking loser already. That's crazy. That's I crazy. Think, I think Christian's gonna win. I don't know. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tight. Because, look, again, Roa has three fucking thing open still. It's true. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Okay. Before we finish off the show with our quick bites, let's check in with ourselves. We've been playing. What have we been up to? Dan, the Black Ops 6 beta. Awesome. <laughs> no. Not the Black Ops 6 beta. Uh, I can finally confirm that we are back, gents. I have completed a video game, and it is what Ast the hell? Astrobot. I completed it 100% minus the platinum trophy. I'm not going for all the bullshit trophies. Like, did you talk to this person on the island for five minutes and then do this and then fucking jump around in a circle? No, I didn't do that. I did all the content. Jesus, platinum. Yeah. I did all the content. Uh, but that last level. Christian, my God, the last thing that you do in the game, fucking hard. That was a hard level, but it was fun. It was really fun. So uh, it is fun, isn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. And I hope that they have more of the challenge levels in the DLC because those were definitely some of the most fun levels um, of the game for sure. Yeah, that last one. All the challenge levels where I think where the game like flexes sort of like how well you can do with the mechanics. It, if you speed up, which is like the thing that I was trying to do, like I wanted to try to attempt a speed run style attempt at these levels. So if I would if I slowed down, I would just restart. I'd kill myself because I wanted to do it in a way that it would would feel cool. And so it took me like 45 minutes to do that last level. That that so, yeah. That last level, I stopped at one spot. Uh, if you remember where the uh, things are rotating, like um, around, I don't know how to describe it. The, the shapes is are it a horizontal? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, that's the only spot that I stopped at to give myself a breather because I was like, I need a breather for a second. Sure. Because uh, it, it took a lot of attempts to like figure out because there's certain ways. Oh, the one part where you're going straight up the wall, I had no idea that you could attack while running up the hit the wall. I fucking yeah. did that. I did that attempt like fucking 30 times 
trying to just get past the fuckers instead of uh, killing them because I didn't know that you could attack them. Attack? Yeah. yeah. I rem- I had a moment during that level, dude, where do you know like the little like slime balls that like spit yes. something at you? Yep. Often during the game, like the way the camera is, when I'm trying to kill them, I'll end up dying because like uh, yeah, I can't see that they're about to shoot me yep. or whatever. And normally it's not a big deal because it's not a challenge level. It's like a you know one of the regular levels, and you spawn like feet away. Uh, but there was a moment in the challenge level where like I got <laughs> killed by that dude like four or five times in a row, and like I almost raged a little bit where I'm like, "Fuck this dude!" And I was like, "Am I really getting mad at this fucking Astrobot game?" And I kind of <laughs> calmed down. But uh, yeah, that 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 level does have hands. I'm I'm with you, Dan. Yeah, and that. What you're talking about, that is that's why my only criticism with the game is not being able to change the sensitivity of the right thumbstick because too many times I would die because I couldn't either see or I didn't have the right angle to see because I couldn't turn the camera quick enough to match my movement quickness, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. like I, I was missing that, like having that. You can't adjust the camera sensitivity in that game? No. There's no adjustment. That's silly. Yeah. That's silly. But one small gripe for a massive game. It was yeah. Great game. I actually have more gripes than you. Like uh in terms of content. Like once I finished it and I was like, this was great, but I do think like its inspirations from Mario are still leave a little bit to be des- to be desired. I think the way like all three Mario platform levels, like um, like, like with Galaxy, like you'll you'll have like a power up that is introduced to you in like the first world or the second world, and you like encounter it for like a kind of a lengthy level, uh, and then it goes away, and then in another level that power up comes back in a different way or the same way, but like now with more challenge, and it'll happen frequently over the course of uh, you know x amount of hours over the course of the whole game, and that happens in in, in these Astrobot levels, but there's they're still kind of short. And it's not quite the same amount of like challenge or unique, like consistent uniqueness okay. over the over the course of the entire game. Or like I had fun with the 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 slow down power up. That one that was my favorite. But you know, what? I didn't really feel it. Go ahead. No, no, keep going. I didn't really feel it used as like something more challenging, despite the like the secret world where like you can do it in the challenge level or like the spinning knives. Like it was cool, but I wanted to see it make more of a like a, a comeback in the actual proper game. Yeah. Again, beyond the casino level. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, let me revise my statement. I have one more criticism as well. Like all, everything you said is totally fair as well. Um, but one more criticism I would have is that Every power up you get in that game, it feels like they designed uh, these sections of the game to be played exclusively with that power up and didn't really expand on that for other areas of the game. So, like, I, yeah, I would have loved to seen have seen one more world that kind of took everything that you learned in all the other worlds and combined all the powers together and you kind of have exactly. to. Yeah, mix and mash them. Yep. That would have been probably the cake, I think, to make it. Absolutely. Yeah, that that uh-huh. would have made it a masterpiece, I think, for me. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And, and like, I think that that sort of thing is fine because it's a it's shorter experience. They made it in X amount of years and it's their first big game apart from the VR title, you know. But I think these are like the growing pains for like a studio of that caliber where like they're like making these smaller experiences. And like, I think over time with the next entry, whatever it ends up being, I think we'll have more of what we're looking for out of like a, a full price title or like, I guess it wasn't even full price. It was like 50, $50, I guess that's like a, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. I'm with you. That, yeah. That, that'd be cool for subsequent titles. What else you got? That's it. Hey, uh, right. Halo. Of course I'm on my grind for hero rank and I am, Oh, I'm chomping at the bit. I'm getting there. Once I get there, this shit's gonna. I'm gonna start beating video games left and right. You watch. Like, still wakes the deep, which you have approximately 45 minutes left of. That's true. Yeah, I know. You're gonna forget what happened in that game, aren't you? I remember. Did you beat exactly Hellblade? Where I was. Nope. I... Did you beat Hades? 
Uh, that's not beatable. Yes, it is. <laughs> there's a, there's a narrative. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. Hades is a, a good one to just go back and get like bite sized pieces of, though. I feel like that's how I did it. That's how I did it, Dan. Don't listen to Gage. That's how I did it. It's fine. <laughs> but it is better as a as a yeah. I, do it in one sitting type of deal. Yeah. Gage? What are you playing? Nothing? Nothing. Oh, I wrote down nothing and then I remembered I could say the finals. And you know what? I think I will take the opportunity to shout out the finals. I think it's a I think it's a great, great game. Season four is right around the corner. Um right right around the corner. I think it's launching tomorrow. Wow. Um and aside from that. Uh, not much, just uh, just the usual here and there, playing a couple games with the boys, but in my own free time, I've not been playing anything. I have jumped back into a game. I don't want to talk about it yet because I don't know if I'm actually going to stick with it. If I do, then I will. But um, for right now, no. we'll just say the finals. No. And it's a great game. Play it. Play it. Check his PC, his Steam profile. <laughs> Is it Fallout 3? <laughs> it's not. It's something on the Xbox, actually, that I, I, I've jumped back into. Hmm. Dead by Daylight? No, not Dead by Daylight. Yeah. Although that's a good game too. Was it? Mm -hmm. We did we did play Left 4 Dead that one time. That was fun with the mods. That was Left 4 Dead is, is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, that's a fun game. Christian uh, played as I, a Spartan. I have did. picture, I did not. picture I did evidence not. Did. of it. I have I picture not. evidence. I can of only it. I can only I imagine lives. what we were playing as on Christians. I, he was following me I around, had... telling me to bend over and look down and it's so funny, dude. It's so oh my funny. God. I my mods are fun. My mods are fun. Fuck you guys. Uh you know what? Shout out the finals, because I think that game is fun. I think that game is fun. Fuck the haters. I will also shut up Bellatro. I got back into Bellatro, and that game is as as fucking good as ever. Um, I do think that is like one of the best roguelites of the year. Um, it's currently sitting in my top five. Bellatro, fucking awesome that game. Um, and I also started playing Metal Gear Solid Two for the very first time. That is the the game in that series that I never played, so I got into it, and it's fucking insane. The level of interactivity in that game is is awesome i shared one clip with you guys that i, I would love to just recount narr like orally with you guys real quick mm. which was uh, uh i'm in i'm in the tanker uh the tanker on the hudson river and there's a hallway with uh semtex on on the on the walls and there are like lasers that you can't see unless unless you shoot the fire extinguisher next to it that way the smoke you know makes the the lasers visible the thing is i shot it when it was too close when i was too snake was too close to the to the extinguisher so i inhaled the what do you call it the extinguish gas thing whatever i inhaled the substance and now my snake starts sneezing so like in the middle of me crawling underneath the lasers i stopped to sneeze i thought that was well, that's weird whatever uh, but then it just kept happening. Like uh, he needed to get rid of like the shit that was in his lungs. The thing is, like, the sneaking game. So as I'm hiding in this freezer, and an enemy walks in to like look get something, snake sneezes, and now the enemy's like, "What was that?" And it comes on over, and like he and like I sneeze again, and he fucking caught me. And so I had to like fight him, whatever. And more dudes come in. That level of interactivity like just doesn't stop uh, there. Um, I think it it's so cool. I'm in the big shell section now. Um, and the ways like uh, stealth expands with like being able to knock on different uh, things on the wall when you're sneaking uh, to like lure enemies in. The way they do cameras when you switch to first person, I think, is fucking sick. There's swimming mechanics that look and feel better than some of the games on PS3 did, which I used to think swimming sucked in video games, but like it feels good to play in MGS2. Um, Always blows my mind when people think that Kojima is uh, obsessed with making movies because he makes the most video gamey games I've ever played. Um, what what do you call it? What is it called in in shooters when 
when you shoot something, it, it, it can tell when there's something on the opposite end of that. That way, like, bullets track based on, like, enemies or objects in the terrain. Do you know what I'm talking about? Hit scan? A, hit scan. Hit scan was, the, yeah, that is exactly the word. Where it um, hits its target as soon as you shoot? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But based on location, right? Like, it exists in the world. Um, am I getting that accurate? Maybe. Sure. There are fucking, like, a bunch of fucking objects in this game that are hit scan to like an individual level that you didn't think a PS2 game would have. Individual bottles in that game are each hit scan or whatever. Where like if you shoot at the, an entire wall that is just fucking uh bottles of liquor, only one will will mm. will, will break and then you'll see like the liquid fall out of it. Same thing with like the the liquid through uh glass or things just things in in general through glass like look and feel like actual glass mind blowing for like 2000 2001 technology so they each have like their own hit boxes individual yes. hit boxes yes 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 yeah it, it's impressive what they what they achieve for with like ps2 technology it's kind of crazy cool. yeah when you when you said the uh the enemies were like oh what was that 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 reminded me of uh, a moment that happened when we were playing Lockdown Protocol, and <laughs> I was the killer, and Gage was acting like a, a AI person for some reason, and I was like, "What the fuck is he doing? He was following a predetermined path around the level, and I'm just following him. Like, what the fuck is this man doing? And I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna kill him." <laughs> that was great. You were being a menace that day, dude. <laughs> When I was the killer. Who, me or Dan? Gage. Gage. I was being a menace. Yeah, I was acting up. I don't know why I was acting like that. <laughs> I think, can I say something? No, never mind. Uh-oh. Yeah, go ahead. I think we need to press pause and lockdown protocol for a little bit. I think, I think, I think it's coming off the rails. The last time we played, nobody was following the rules. It's getting I'm chaotic. I think we need to press pause before this game, before we just burn out on this game. I was, saying I was this Go ahead. I was going to suggest that this Saturday. Let's, let's, yeah. let's see what else is. Let's see what else is on the on the board, on the agenda. Yeah. Corral to some cooperatively for once. Hey, you know? work together as a team. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get into our quick bites before we close out this tight hour. Uh, Concord, the game director, has stepped down while the studio remains in limbo. Not much to add there. The Sony has not made a decision on what to do with Concord just yet, and the game director has decided to leave, step down from his position, because uh, he just doesn't know. Um, and I don't blame him. But also, like, kind of, a, you know, what happened is, is, is on his shoulders, so if he feels like he needs to step down for the game to be better... There you have it. Okay. Don't make Continuing. me talk about Concord, please. That's <laughs> next next quick bite. I, I had to talk about it for like ten minutes on this shooter video coming out. Anyway. Uh, no. New video game adaptations, animated series. What the fuck is this? Twitter is insane, dude. The replies to stuff on <laughs> on on things sometimes, or like the discover more. Anyway, I don't know. You know, like the the blue checks who are like, oh, they were. Uh, I watched this series already, and you can watch it on my OF or what? You know what I mean? Like blue checks like that. Dude, right. the blue. Huh? The blue check on mine that's under discover more of this post is completely different than what you're talking about. It's not. It's not Maddie Journey or. Oh no, it is. Okay. It's just, yours is Maddie Journey too. Yes. Yeah. That caught me off guard. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? <laughs> oh, incredible. Yeah, new animated shows of video games are coming to Netflix, including Devil May Cry, Splinter Cell, and Tomb Raider. Uh, and they all look great. Also, uh, Cyberpunk, Edge Runners is getting something else. We don't know what, but uh, exciting times for the Netflix animated shows. They all look great. 
Hell yeah. We can't get a Splinter Cell to see game, but we'll get Game? Those. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if we all watch this series, it'll tell Ubisoft that we want another fucking game. Yeah. Because then you have, like, quantifiable, like, analytics. Like, okay, we're getting X amount of numbers, like, of watch time. People are interested in this series. Which they are making it. It's just taking way too fucking long. Sure. Right. Can I say, too, Leif Schreiber as Sam Fisher? The, from the first word, I was like, yeah, this sounds pretty good. For the games? No, no, for the animated series. Oh, okay. Yeah. I gotta take a picture of this Discover More stuff and then send it to the group chat. It's so ridiculous, dude. I, I found out, uh, was it 80% of the user base left since the, since the Elon takeover? I believe it. RGG Studio has announced a new Like a Dragon spinoff game uh, coming next year in February. 2025 called Like a Dragon Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. Uh, it's an eight minute long trailer. Uh, it looks insane. I feel like all, the, all these games trailers end up on a beach. Is that right? Just two of them. Just, Just this is these are the, yeah. The, the last spinoff one took place in Hawaii as well. So they're just using the same assets to tell a different story, which is smart because that's how you get games and gotcha. you know, rapid succession. PC gaming is bigger than ever because Steam just hit an all time record of 38.3 million players online. PC gaming has been growing rap uh, steadily in recent years with Steam hitting an all time peak of 32 million in January 2023. And 37 million in August of 2024. So that is an uptick of 4 million on Steam. Past few months. Eat shit, console gamers. PC gaming is king. You're playing a game on Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's We're gonna... Hint. Why don't you go buy a PS4 Pro? That's a PS5 hint because Pro. it's probably a back, backwards compatible game. If, he, if he's playing it on Xbox... It's actually not, surprisingly. Oh. It is a game that plays that plays well with controller. I own it on both PC and console, but I was like, you know what? I want an excuse to sit down on the couch every now and again. That's why I downloaded it there. Just tell me to come sit next to you. That's your excuse. Sit down, have a couple of brews. What are you doing next, week, next month? Come on. <laughs> come mm. through. Mm. We're going to take a detour into the hub. The hardware hub, that is. Uh, for some updates on three new pieces of hardware. First up is PlayStation. They've announced their 30th anniversary collection for PlayStation 5 and various accessories. Uh, you have the PS5... Oh, uh, the PlayStation 5 Pro and the PlayStation 5 Slim have new faceplates with the classic PlayStation logo as well as like a thing on the bottom that has like the the symbols of the the controllers, but also they use that to also say thirtieth anniversary. Uh, a new PS portal, and then a two new controllers. The, obviously, the the Dual Sense Edge, and then the Dual. Sorry, that's the new. That's the Pro one, right? One fifty. Yes, Dual Sense Edge. Edge. Yeah. In the proper Dual Sense, um, and both those controllers have the classic PlayStation color with colored face buttons, which I am so happy they brought that fucking back finally. Um, because I think it looks good on a controller, and then the classic color logo in the middle as well. Um, I'm not the kind of dude that was like, "Oh, I need this PS5 Pro now just because the color is different." Mm. Um, it's still seven hundred dollars. That's t that's too much money for me, uh, for only so much of an upgrade. But I do think for someone like me who has not bought a second controller at all this generation, the 30th anniversary one looks like kind of an exciting one for me to make my second controller. So I think I might get that one. I have I have no nostalgia whatsoever for PlayStation because I started with PlayStation 3, but these designs are fucking beautiful. I yes. love these designs. Like the mm -hmm. the two-tone grays, like they work very well. I like that kind of two-tone. Like when I say I don't like two-tone, I don't like when it's like extreme, you know, opposites or whatever. 
like I feel like these colors complement very well and the colored uh buttons and the colored PlayStation logo really stands out on these I, it looks I nice. really like. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, like we're higher... talking about oh sorry good. Oh please. No, no, no. Just yeah, uh, yeah, I was talking about this uh with Guy and th- this lineup looks absolutely gorgeous and uh I, I can't agree more, Dan. This this stuff looks it's it's tempting. It's very, very tempting. I, I checked out the video, the component. They have like a six minute video on YouTube. I didn't know, but like they added textures to the touchpad and then the triggers as well. They have like little, like tiny little micro symbols, I guess the square triangle, circle X. I was like, oh, okay, that's like a neat little touch. And there's like the 30 somewhere. Hey, what, what's up? I just remembered when you just said touchpad. That's another complaint I have about Astrobot. What the fuck? They don't even use the touchpad. Right? Yeah, the v- the VR game uses that touchpad really well, but yeah. uh, the actual ass like the PS5 game, yeah, it didn't really do that at all. Although, I, if they're gonna choose something, I'm glad it's the the triggers and not the touchpad, I guess. But you're right, yeah, right. for sure. Uh, the one thing that actually did get me the like the the fucking nostalgia bait, I thought was this is so stupid. The fucking <laughs> the packaging for the the controller is like the cable colors. Or whatever. I guess this is the console, like the cable colors. That's that's neat. Uh, but f- specifically for the controller, the the end of the controller, that like the USB C part that plugs into, um, I think the console or the controller, and I can't tell which one is which, is is shaped like the original PlayStation One controller port. I was like, okay, they didn't need to do that. That's something that I think is kind of neat. Yeah, it's on the console end, so it looks like. Like the OG. You're plugging in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of hot new hardware, though, Xbox also unveiling a, a new collection of hardware. This is the Cypher series. That, that's coming to el- the Elite Series 2 controllers uh, in the Xbox Design Lab. And I think those look really good as well. Uh, you can do transparent colors in various different colorways. Um, and I think as well, you can change the D-pad out with this as well, right? Chromatic D-pad and paddles uh, now available with this as well. Uh, and I do think they look really, really, really good. I think Dan has a, a Cypher controller in his collection. Um... Yeah, a Cypher-looking one. It looks like this. It's like a different color than black on the on the grip of the... Oh, that was one of the controller. Xbox 20th anniversary oh, yes. or something like that? Yeah, it is, right. yes. The 20th yeah. anniversary one is the translucent. Yep, you're right. Uh, yeah, I think... I think this is a huge opportunity for Sony to to do something like this because I feel like a lot of people would be all over that for PlayStation controllers too. Sure. So that would be cool for them to get something like this. But yeah, uh, cool for the people who like the translucent designs. Maybe I'll make another design just for fun. Let's see what it looks like. You may not have to. You may get one when you win Fantasy Critic. Okay, it would not be one of these expensive ones. Come on now. Uh, that's true. That's the uh, ex- the yeah. What you call it? <laughs> the elite controller. Is that, are those elite? colors? Are those color options only available for the elite? I think so. Yeah. Okay. The translucent ones. Yeah. Right. 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 What is what is the the elite has the paddles right? Yeah. And well, yes, but. but I, and I can't believe Sony missed this opportunity. The Elite has an insane internal battery as well compared to oh, the, the, the Edge. Like, yes, yeah. mine mine lasts like three to four weeks easily before I need to recharge it. How often are you guys using paddles? I don't use paddles. Depends on the game. For Hades, sure. I, used, okay. I used paddles a lot. Uh, but for most games, eh... I'm in the minority. I, I played at my cousin's house using the Edge, and I didn't like it. I I, I preferred the, just the standard. That's I thought it was weird. No, that's fair. As, and you play similarly to me with the claw, right, Christian? <laughs> yeah, a yeah. little bit of the claw, yeah. So when you play that way, you don't even need the paddles <laughs> because you have your fingers available to every button. So This is how I, this is how I know we're both on the spectrum, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Last bit of hardware news is the MetaQuest 3 is getting a new SKU, uh, the MetaQuest 3S. It officially launches in October, and it's bundled with Arkham Shadow, and it is cheaper than the uh, standard Quest 3. Interesting. Crazy. Huh. 
So it's, and then today, med- what's up? Sorry. So it's uh, it's not quite as good as the three. I'm just I didn't even realize this was a thing. But it's I didn't know until two. today. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Not quite as good as the three, but better than the two. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and then for RPG fans, Metaphor Refantasio got a demo available today on all platforms. Uh, and then the demo progress transfers over to the full release of the game later next month. And that's it. That's all the news. That's it. That's it. Oh, tied out. Pencils down. <laughs> you ever miss taking tests or no? God, no. Sometimes, actually. I was a terrible test taker. I did, I did well under pressure. I wouldn't study at all. And then oh, I'd be like, fuck God. it, I'm just going to wing it. And then I'd get there, and I'd always do better than expected. So you get degrees, huh? I was fucking studying for hours and shit, and then I would just get C's because I hate, I hated test taking. Oh. Does it anger you that I would not study at all and get, like, C plus, B minus on average? Yeah, it would. Uh, now it depends on the subject because math I was very good in, but fuck. right, right, right. Put me in science, and I'm like, fuck you. Do C every time. I had a zero percent in, in a class once. It was a science class. <laughs> I didn't do anything, and then like I was like, you know what? I, I suddenly I was like, this sucks. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want zero. So I talked to him. I was like. Listen, I've 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 been learning this stuff. I just haven't been doing anything. Can I make this up over the course of like X amount of months so I can get back on track? And he's like, "Oh, I appreciate you saying that." Yeah, no, for sure. And so I did, and I ended up with a fucking B plus. There you go. <laughs> he asked, "Like, do you think you deserve an A minus?" Because he's like, "You're on the cusp. You think you deserve an A minus?" And I was like, "I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I chilled for like a big big part of the year. Like, I don't think I I do." And he's like, "All right, fine, B plus." I realized, wow. oh man, he he would have given it to me if I asked. Wow. Whatever. Thank you again to everyone joining us live on YouTube and, and Twitch, as well as podcast services everywhere, including Apple Pods, YouTube Music, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts. Thank you, Roshan, who fucking ditched us today. <laughs> Thank you, me. Thank you, Gage. That's Dan. He's probably working. And this has been Podcast BXN. We are out of here. Much love and keep on being. See ya. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>